Yeah, welcome everybody from my side as well. Dear customers, partners, comedians, and friends, it's great to be here again and to have you here in Hamburg, this beautiful city, isn't it? Kind of like, kind of perfect with this weather at the waterfront, and then look at this nice uh, Elbphilharmonie, this thing that costs a lot of money and now everyone loves it. I really like this place, and uh, I would like to start my little talk with a very controversial topic. So I'm married to an American, and whenever I go to the US, people don't know Hamburg usually, and then I say, oh, Hamburg, I'm from Hamburg. Oh, you're a hamburger. I said, oh, yes, I am a hamburger. And um, here's the controversial part. Hamburgers are called hamburgers <laughs> because they are from Hamburg. And nobody in Hamburg knows this, and nobody even believes this, but I'm pretty sure it's true. And, <laughs> and you will see, it was just a Belettenbrötchen, guys. It's like the Belettenbrötchen, just think about it. It was taken to the US, pimped with some you know, stuff, made warm instead of cold, and then it became a hamburger because like a frankfurter is the little sausage, the hamburger is the Belettenbrötchen. So now the controversial discussion is, is that true or not? I, I like to believe it's true. And so I'm a hamburger, and I also like Bulletin <laughs> So yes, now it's your take-home value. You already have something. Um, talking about elevating experience and driving impact. That's kind of like what we launched last year at the Comedia Connect. It really captures well what we are kind of like aim to do with you. And it also captures well what I think is important to all of you, because the customer experience is a huge difference maker. It really drives the, you know, the results at the end, the conversion of customers, the customer happiness and the like. I want to talk about why you can't have one without the other. Customer experience, we discussed this last year as well. Man, it's, it's the difference maker, right? It's, like, it's the one thing that brands can influence to outperform the competition. If you have a better customer experience, you win. But also, if your customer experience is broken, you will lose. Because one bad experience is enough to lose a customer. The statistics are brutal. When you look at the numbers, it's really like, make people 10 seconds, wait for 10 seconds, and 50% of them are gone. Or kind of like one bad experience, and three, one in three customers kind of like that loved your brand will leave. That part, I think, I still struggle to understand. Because love your brand and one bad experience, that basically that's so hard to keep these people. But then also 45%, and that was in 2021, of, of kind of like customers who go to your website and don't get a personalized experience, that they kind of like don't like that, that they are frustrated with that. So the expectations of customers are, are huge. And then there's these nice examples that kind of figure it out, right? Amazon. I still find it fascinating that you can go on this app in the evening and you need something and you click a button and the next day it's there. It's kind of like this reliable delivery against your expectation. It's kind of, it felt weird years ago when that was possible in, in San Francisco to order a new shirt within an hour, but now there's more and more stuff within kind of like a short period of time, bump, there it is. Zappos. That's not that famous here in Germany, but um, that was within the US known for the exceptional customer service. So you could call them and they fixed problems. That was their brand. And they got acquired by Amazon after the fact because they were so good at customer service. And what they sell is shoes, like a shoe store online. So you would think, yeah, how can you make a difference? The difference they made is when you called them, they always went above and beyond to solve your problem. And they had this internal story Someone called and said, I'm in this hotel in the middle of nowhere. I'm really hungry now. Can you help me order a pizza? And the guy said, yeah, you know, we sell shoes. It's like, yeah, but, but you're so good at customer service. You always solve problems. Can you get me a pizza, please? And the guy ordered a pizza for this. You know, and, and that was the storyline at the end, that kind of like going above and beyond is something that resonated. And it resonated so well that Amazon realized, instead of competing with Zappos, they had to acquire them. Yeah, and then Apple, like just mastering, really understanding what we want and didn't know that we wanted, sorry. Like with the Apple Vision 1 that we saw, man, it's like, it's incredible. All these, these watches, 
that you see them all the time now, because they just solve a problem that so elegantly and so easily that it's inspiring. So elevating customer experience is key to success for all of our businesses. For Comedia, we're working hard on this, and I think for all of our customers and all of our partners. And I'd like to you know, fulfill the promise of the talk that we look into the future. So what is coming? What are some of the things that, you know, even though the future is hard to predict, that are on the horizon and that will change something? The first one I touched on that topic is being more immersive. So if you saw the, the kind of keynote from Apple, that is actually the big part, that suddenly, wherever you are, you can have this immersive experience of like a gigantic screen in front of you, even though you might be in a tiny apartment or you are in, this, in a seat um, on an airplane, you have this gigantic screen in front of you where you can kind of like dive into content. And I'm pretty sure it will happen. Right? I'm pretty sure that you know, not too long from now, at a flight, you will see people basically zoning out and doing these things. That will be a topic for, for I think, brands to represent themselves there. Spatial computing, the new term for that, yeah, blending these kind of like workplace apps with your surroundings. I'm curious about that, how that will play out. And then even going so far that you have a digital representation of yourself in there so that you are able to really interact with people through these devices. I'm curious about this, how this will work, but uh, I would not kind of like dismiss that as potentially something that we all will do in the, in the near future. Second, more unique. A customer of ours launched this. This is called VIA, the treasure trunk. VIA costs you something like $34,000, and it's a virtual trunk to travel. When you have it, though, you are able in the future to buy some other virtual or real items that you will never get if you don't have this trunk. And they say it's something you can't resell. It's so-called so soul-bound. It's basically you and the brand, Louis Vuitton, have this lifelong connection now that you get access to ex experiences that are completely unique. And that sounds kind of like funny at the beginning, but I think it will be a huge success. And I would even think that when you think about your car and all these extra features that the cars now try to sell you, like self-driving and the like, it would be great if I pay for that once, not for the car, but for myself. The rest of my life, I want to have that capability, right? Like, so I think brands will start to do these things, where they give you kind of like unique experiences that are bound to yourself and not bound to this, this, this car. More relevant. Another customer of ours, Hawker 1-1. Yeah, I talked about these shoes, I love them still, and I basically was in Munich recently, and people at the airport, security line, asked me about the shoes. Like, so I can really recommend them, they are so soft. Um, Hawker 1-1 is growing like wildfire. They are great, and what they did is they wanted to be more relevant to their customers. So this is the homepage, you have a lot of content there, and then, very simply, they kind of like offer you to do something like a product finder, like guided selling. So they ask you, okay, man, woman, are you running or walking or hiking? Or So I'm running, like, do I do it for my health? Or do I like to basically go trail running and all terrain? Which terrain? Then also asking well, how long, like 5K, and, um, you know, extra soft or a little firmer? So all these questions, so eight of those. Then, like, does my arch need some help? No. And wide, extra wide. Yeah, I need, it. I need wider shoes. And then they give you good, better, best. So good, great, and best. So the big structure that they have with all these products, they solve that complexity and make it very simple for me to decide. What they also do is they enable me to log in and say, from now on, when you come back, we have actually the right content for you. We show you exactly the stuff that is relevant for you. So they have this content kind of like repository now where they know exactly what is the information that is relevant for which kind of like target audience, uh, more than 30 something um, different kind of segments, and they play out the content step by step. Whenever I come back, I get another thing that is relevant for me. So they use content now in a very different way and, and help me 
kind of like to get what I want faster, easier, without producing more content, but doing it differently. Faster, another nice example. So when we worked with the German army, they told us one issue they have is that um, the society talks about them and they have to be part of this conversation or they basically have a problem because they need to be supported by society. That was before the Ukraine war, like the war in Ukraine um, by Russia, and that was for them really a problem because as a volunteer army, they need volunteers and they need the backing of society. So they told us, hey, we have to be able to have all the content about all the things that, that are, we are active in faster, up to date, to basically be part of the, the conversation. And they did, and it was, has been really successful. Now, in the new world we live in, where war is something that is not theoretical there, but it's real, um, it's kind of like indeed more, even more important to give up-to-date information and let people connect with information they can trust. So, moving at the speed of culture, we call that. And it's something that is true from our perspective in more and more of the different markets. You have to be there to communicate information, otherwise you're not part of the conversation. More conversational. That's something that is not yet kind of launched, but um, app, uh, like Microsoft is working on that. So they will use generative AI inside of their Microsoft 365 setup to kind of like help you get stuff done. And what you can see here is, yeah, create a SWOT analysis in, in loop based on this intro. So basically there was some content and this thing created a SWOT analysis. Then you tell us, okay, please turn that into a presentation and please turn that into an offer for the customer. So you can basically use all the things you do on Teams suddenly to have your Microsoft AI solve problems for you, generate presentations, make offers, kind of like all these things as so-called co-pilot will run in the background. That seems far-fetched. It's not really because when you look at coding at GitHub, another company that belongs to Microsoft, they already do that, right? GitHub Copilot gets to something like 70, 80 percent of the lines of code are written by the computer, by AI, and not by the coder anymore. Oh, I hope nobody got hurt. No, it's the camera. So it's very likely that, you know, we will talk to software, we will talk to machines, because the understanding of text is good enough that instead of having a complex AI a user interface, you just have English or German and talk to it. Human touch, in, in basically the opposite direction, is the other thing. When we have more and more AI and more and more systems, computers, basically doing stuff for us, there's the alternative to have humans interacting with us. And that is a huge opportunity as well. Um, Apple kind of like when they launched their stores, the Apple stores, a long time ago, it seems nonsensical. Everyone wanted to do internet and they started to do like retail stores. But it was huge for their brand because people could experience the Apple ex like stores. Then they had the genie bar with the experts. Then they launched something that you can basically book an appointment with an Apple specialist. So they help you find the right iPhone for you or for your kids. And you had to go to the store to do that. Now, at least in the US, they launched another thing. It's basically shop with an Apple specialist inside the online store. So you are about to select your iPhone, you have some questions, you don't know how it works, you press a button, and then you have this video experience. They see, you see them, but they don't see you. But you have someone that helps you through this question and adds all these things and gives the human touch to solve your problem. I'm pretty sure that the conversion rate of that is massively higher than when you don't have that. Because my experience is, from my own life, often I go through these things, I try to figure out, and then I know, okay, is this, th now what is better? Two things, one is called 2.0 and the other called X. What is the difference? And, and you have these questions and you need to answer them to basically make a sound decision. And that's often missing. So what we see happening is that you will have digital experience with a human touch in there. Yeah, and not just AI, but a human to talk to for the moment you want to. That might not be something for everybody. Like, I heard that like, teenagers 
they don't want to talk to people. They want to, like maybe chat, but not talk. Yeah? Um, but um, it is something for a lot. We know, for example, that in the banking industry, seeing someone elevates the level of trust massively to your brand. Because you see someone, you basically we know how to kind of relate to faces. And therefore, there is something. Overall, the expectations of customers, they are, yeah, people want to be respected, right? Like privacy was this topic many years. It will even more be a topic with AI because AI can do so much. They can impersonate you, right? They know your voice, they know your image. They, soon you will have the situation that the AI can use that also against you. So respecting the privacy uh, and the protect the privacy of customers is huge. Second is, and that sounds contradictive, know me. We know from a lot of customers, especially in the luxury space, the customers expect to be understood. I want you to know who I am and not give me something that doesn't make sense for me. I want you to basically, you know, pro provide the help that I need as a human being and not as some kind of like abstract user of the website. So. What we hear there is that people want to have personalized experiences, but they still want the privacy to be protected. And the big difference is how you get there. If you ask customers, hey, share something about you, it's completely okay to use that data because customers want to share that data and give it to you, and then they expect you to use it. If you sneak up on them and buy that data from a platform somewhere else, that might not be as appreciated. Delight me. Really go above and beyond. Like, like I showed these examples, enable people to connect and wow me, yeah? make it something that is extraordinary. Even this kind of blending of human and, and uh, digital experience. When someone went to your website, tried to solve a problem, didn't go further, if they call the call center, there should be someone waiting for them. Hey, we, we, you're looking at this, I can help you with that. I know what, you, what, you, what you're struggling with. So that's what customers want these days. And um, yeah, we better get ready to deliver against these expectations. So there are three pillars that I'd like to highlight. One is really understand your customer. Yeah. It's really kind of like the statistics are very clear. The expectation of customers is don't waste my time with stuff that is not relevant. Make it easy for me to connect. Kind of give me the stuff that I need and, and help me with my problem. So they want you to understand them. And then use that to really personalize the experience. The little differences, like the example with um, Zappos, they managed always to say, well, here's the, for example, the uh, delivery timeline that they gave the customer next, next Tuesday. And internally, they worked hard to deliver it on Monday because they wanted the customer to be a little bit positively surprised. Or they put something in there, like a note or some extra little product. So they always said, hey, let's have an expectation and go a little bit above that. So these little things make a huge difference. And always to take a question of, okay, how can we add value in this moment for this customer? Can we take friction away? Can we kind of delight them? Can we make it funny? Can we kind of like make it cheaper for them, faster? So the question like always, hey, is there a way we can really make this a better experience for the customer? How can we add value for, for them? These are the three pillars. And yeah, I'm excited that we have this forum. I'm excited about the things that are coming because it will be huge, right? The, the customer experience of the future, it's not set. It's, like, it's really like an open field with a lot of innovation coming. And what we want to be there is that we want to be your partner and the partner of our partners to do it. I want, we want really to basically connect with you and dive into this and create some of these outstanding experiences that blow minds and that kind of like really connect with customers and make a difference and, and make your business grow. And with that, I'd like to say thank you and hope you have a great show, have a lot of fun and a nice experience. Thanks.